Yes. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Just a show of hands, how many of you in the room are vegans? Okay, Be vegans, vegetarians. Okay, and flexitarians. Okay, cool. All right, let's press go. Let's see, here we go. Okay, cool. So my name is Ken Spector with a website and app called Happy Cow. And how many of you have heard of Happy Cow before? Good, pretty much all of you, okay. You haven't heard of Happy Cow. Oh, cool. So Happy Cow is the world's largest vegan and vegetarian restaurant guide and health food store guide. Uh, we were started in 1999 as a website and later moved into an application that you can get on Android and iPhone. And it enables you to easily find vegan and vegetarian restaurants anywhere in the world. In fact, we're in 187 countries now. We've mapped out all the little towns and you can find health food stores. You can find farmers markets. Um, we just added a section of vegan professionals on the website, so we're going to get a little more into that. So it's really helpful as a vegan or even a non-vegan looking for veg options or a healthier diet to find vegan and vegetarian food. So uh, it, as I said, so app site, uh, an app and a website. Uh, community uh, yourselves, you can add photos, you can add reviews as well. And we have 450 ambassadors throughout the world to help our, to keep our data current. Thank you, ambassadors. We also have a cookbook. It's called the Happy Cow Cookbook, and it's restaurants around the world. The, the most local restaurant uh, that contributed a recipe to this cookbook was Veggies on Fire in Den Haag. How many of you have eaten at Veggies on Fire? Yeah. Oh, terrific, yeah. Really great restaurant. So they uh, contributed a recipe to our Happy Cow Cookbook. Why must we change our diet? For most of you who are vegans, I don't need to put this slide in, but there are two people who are not vegans, and I'm going to talk directly to you about this. <laughs> okay. So uh, increased environment, uh, population. Uh, in the year zero, there were about 250 million people in the world. In the 1950, there were about 2.5 billion. But from 1950 to 2050, 2.5 billion, 10 billion. Massive, massive amount of growth. There just isn't enough land to keep uh, putting cows on them and feeding them what we feed them. And there just isn't enough land. There's, the, fresh water is being used by cows and, and, and pigs and various other animals at an exorbitant rate. Uh, it's 25 gallons to make a pound of wheat and a pound of meat. 2,500 to 6,000 gallons of water to make a pound of meat. So just water in of itself. There's so many other issues. Um, as I said, 68% of our World's agricultural land is used for livestock. It's an incredible amount of land. Um, and our oceans are polluted and getting more polluted by the day. And we have to also clean up plastics as well and other contaminants that are going into the oceans. And animal rights as well. I'm sure you probably already know about that. But uh, OK, so let's get right into some data that we have on Happy Cow. For all of you vegans, you know, I know we want to know what's going on as far as the vegan restaurants in the world. So let's talk a little bit about this. So in Paris, France, there are now 65 vegan restaurants. I just added Paris to my top 10 list of vegan cities in the world for vegans to go to or not vegans to go to who want vegan food. So Paris, France, Taiwan or Taipei, 69 vegan restaurants. Toronto, Canada, 68. Sao Paulo, 64, vegan, all vegan. These aren't vegetarian. These are purely vegan restaurants. Berlin, we have 67. Uh, Tokyo, Japan, 72. Los Angeles, 83. Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, 89. New York City, 124 vegan restaurants. And number one is? Melbourne. Melbourne? Yeah. It, you think so? OK. Yeah. All right, anyone else? One, the number one, the, the city with the most vegan restaurants in the world. Utrecht? I heard Utrecht. Yeah. Tel Aviv? Tel Aviv, that's good. OK. Somewhere in the US. Somewhere in the US. OK. Portland? I forget which. Portland? Yeah, Portland. Portland? OK. OK. Anyone else? Five, four, three, two. London, England. 132 vegan restaurants in London, England. Unbelievable. Considering I went to school when I was 13 in England way back in the day and there really wasn't much going on in London in terms of food quality. It just wasn't very good. Went in 2001 to London and I was vegan and I was looking for vegan restaurants. I found one or two vegetarian restaurants. 132 and, and London actually is the first city, which I'll get into a little bit later, uh, to have passed 100 vegan restaurants on Happy Cow. And that was September of 2017. This is density, based on density. So somebody said uh, Tel Aviv, 
Uh, Tel Aviv is number eight in terms of density per population, how many vegan restaurants there are. But number one is Prague, Czechia, with 54 vegan restaurants, but the most vegan restaurants per person in the world. So great place to go. And that's in 15 square miles. And Warsaw, Poland is another great place, which I'll get into later in Berlin. And Okay, as far as what I do to locate other vegans before I go on trips, um, I tend to map out all the vegan restaurants before I go on a trip, and then I pick an Airbnb right there in the middle of where all the vegan restaurants are. It just makes it more convenient. So um, I also like to meet people in Facebook groups as well. It's easy. You just go in Utrecht Vegans. You can meet people on Facebook. The other one's couch surfing. Even if you don't couch surf, it's really nice to go in. They have nice filters and you can filter it out on anyone you're interested in meeting. Um, you know, if you're interested in meeting, you know, uh, vegans or vegetarians or whatever you want to do, couch surfing is a great way to meet people. And there's people that just want to meet up as opposed to hosting. So it's a really nice, nice way to go. Google Translate. How many of you have Google Translate on your phones right now? Okay, how many of you know what Google Translate is? Okay, Google Translate is an amazing tool, especially living in Europe. You're so close to other countries that speak other languages. <laughs> and if you travel at all, this is essential to have on your phone. Um, you can, one of the things I like to do is download the languages. Like if I'm in, uh, where was I? I was in Greece, I downloaded the Greek uh, fonts. It's uh, Greek voice fonts or Greek uh, languages. And you can basically take your phone, put it up to a menu, and it just translates the menu as though you speak that language. So it's live. It's really nice once you do that. Um, it also, you can talk to people. You can say, I am vegan. And it just says, I'm vegan. Then they talk. Really essential. It's a free app. And it's uh, amazing if you have an Android or iPhone. Vegan deficiencies. So the reason I talk about this is I meet so many vegans who just don't supplement. And um, how many of you vegans supplement B12? How many of you don't supplement B12? Be honest, be honest, be honest. Okay, good. Yesterday it was about 50%. Today it's, uh, it's not. So anyway, these are some of the, the deficiencies that I've seen over the years. By the way, I've been vegan for almost 27 years. So I have a bit of a vegan background. So I've seen a lot. And uh, so B12, no reliable food source. Iron is something that some people I've seen, these are some of my friends who've been vegan for a number of years. They, they sometimes have iron deficiencies. Um, these are some uh, vegetable sources of iron, uh, calcium, tofu, and broccoli. Um, that's, these are just a couple more things I'll just go through. Um, so D3, one thing um, actually about D3 is you can, you can take mushrooms and you can put them in the sun for eight hours one day and then eight hours the next day in the summer, and the sun will actually infuse vitamin D into the mushrooms. And then you can eat those mushrooms and you get your vitamin D all winter. You can pulverize them, you can dry them, and you'll have your vitamin D which is really cool. It's kind of like skin on the, on the outside of mushrooms. So omega-3 fatty acids, I actually um, do uh, supplement omega-3 fatty acids. I mean, you get them from flax seeds. I do encourage you as vegans to uh, buy flax seeds. Lin, linzin, how do you, what is, what is it? Lin, linzin? Linza. Lin, linza. So linza, and not just eat them, but to actually grind them up. You can buy a little grinder and then just grind them up or break them down, they're not expensive, and they will give you omega-3 fatty acids, which are essential for your brain health and your heart health, and they're really, really good for you. I see so many people that are not getting enough omega-3 fatty acids, and also people, some people not getting enough B12, but this is, this is the big one right here that I find that a lot of uh, vegans, is it, can you see that? A lot of vegans are not getting that omega-3s, so flax seeds, you can just put them on anything. Um, and, then, uh, and then iodine, uh, salts used to have iodine in them, but everyone's using just sea salt. It doesn't have iodine in it, so that's becoming more of a problem. So seaweed is a good source of that. So these are just some things you might maybe take a picture, and these are some things you might want to look for in your diet as vegans. And these are the ones that I supplement. Um, I actually just bought, because I ran out, I bought this downstairs, this um, Nature Link. It's on sale, and it's a D3, a vegan D3. And uh, you can get this from the sun, but not this time of year. Meat eaters and vegans alike need to supplement D from now until like April. There's just not enough vitamin D. You're in a building right now. You're not getting enough from the sun. So you need to supplement that um, in, these, in this part of the world. And then omega-3s um, as well. I do have those pills back in my suitcase. Vegan Passport. Christine, who runs this event, gave me a vegan passport a number of years ago. It's interesting because this is, uh, as you can see, it's a smiley face. And you have all the, uh, all the fruits and whatnot. And this is a sad face. And this sort of says it all. You don't need really to buy the vegan passport, even though I say support the vegan society, because this page says it all. And it tra it's any language. It's universal. So if you want to take a picture, feel free. <laughs> um, on an airplane, uh, I do fly somewhat sometimes. <laughs> and uh, what I find is um, you know, taking nuts with you, 
I would recommend not just peanuts. I would always recommend anything but peanuts. Peanuts are available in every single country. You'll be so sick of them if you travel at all. But I would say just, you know, these are nice things to bring on an airplane, like cashews or, or, or pistachios, anything but peanuts, I find. Um, the healthiest nut I've heard is the walnut, by the way. So walnuts are a good one. They have omega-3s as well. Fruits, uh, like grapes, I find are really a good thing to bring on airplanes, a good thing to travel with. You know, just bring some grapes. And then beans and veggies, just dried beans and veggies as well. Um, do you know that you can order a vegan meal on an airplane? I'm sure many of you know that. I always run into vegans who don't know that and they fly and they don't realize. If it's an international flight, you can order a vegan meal on an airplane. I sort of encourage bring your own food because it's healthier, I think, than, than what they even serve you. Um, and I go to fruits, uh, local markets, and find fruits and nuts, and I use Google to translate unfamiliar terms. So that Google Translate is very essential. And these are, this is just a market in Chile. Those are murder berries, absolutely amazing. You can't buy those anywhere else as far as I know, but they were absolutely, absolutely delicious. These are my favorite vegan destinations in the world. People always say, well, you know, of all the places you've been, where's the best place? What's the best place? Well, these are the best places that I've been to as far as a vegans, uh, vegan places to eat and just the, the, the vegan knowledge that the people have. So how many of you have been to vegans in Germany, vegans grocery store? Yeah. So I did a video in vegans. We have a YouTube channel. Uh, it's uh, Happy Cow's YouTube channel. And one of the earlier videos that I did was actually interviewing the CEO of Vegans in Berlin. And it's an amazing grocery store. I felt like a kid again. It felt like I was a child going to a candy store because it's all vegan products. And um, it's amazing. He, at, at the time I interviewed him, he had over 80 types of vegan cheese. Now he has over 120 types of vegan cheese in his store. That's amazing, vegan cheese. So I um, found Donner Kebab. It was vegan. Uh, which was quite amazing. There was an upscale restaurant called Lucky Leak as well that was really good. So this was an interesting story. When I was in Berlin, um, this uh, is Vonner restaurant. This is actually vegan meat. It's, I don't have a picture of Donner kebab. It's vegan meat. But there were two, uh, I think they were 18 years old, and I sat down and I said, hey, so what do you think of, uh, what do you think of this? What do you think of the restaurant? They said, oh, it's great. I said, oh, you, you, you're vegans. He said, oh, pff, pff, vegans? No, we hate vegans. We don't want to be vegan. So it turns out that they didn't realize that this was vegan meat. It is so good and so believable that they didn't believe that this was vegan meat, and they were eating a vegan sandwich, and they couldn't believe when I told them that. Berlin, there it is, the Donner kebab that I had in Berlin. That's the best quiche I've ever had in the world. That was at No Milk Today in Berlin. Lucky Leak, an upscale vegan restaurant. A lot of slides that I have are just pictures of food, just to you know, kind of encourage you to maybe see certain things that are around the world and available and maybe inspire you to put more color in your food. Warsaw, Poland. Look at this circus over here. That's actually the best food picture I've ever taken in my life. Um, it was vegan sushi at a place called Edamame, and I'm a lover of vegan sushi. And I'm noticing vegan sushi places are opening up all over the world. There's one I know in Cologne, Cologne, I pronounce it Cologne, I think you say Cologne, 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 Germany. It's uh, next week, so I'm gonna try that one. But vegan sushi is really taking off. It's a new trend of you know, making a lot of money because you can charge a lot for just some rice and some vegetables. Make it a nice presentation, right? So uh, in Warsaw, this was a burger at Krovajava, and uh, I did a video about this called Warsaw Vegan Explosion. In Warsaw, in 2014, we made reservations to go to Warsaw because we saw like a, ma a massive growth in the number of vegan restaurants, and it was about 11 in a short period of time. We said, oh, this could be the next explosion. We gotta get over there, so we did. Range to go, May 2015, and by that time, there were 25 vegan restaurants. Now there are 45 vegan restaurants in two circular kilometers. So that's like the area that you see right here around us, 45 vegan restaurants. It's amazing. So is it Warsaw, uh, Vasha, Vashava? How do you pronounce Warsaw? Vash, Vasha? Yeah. Warsaw. Warsaw? Warsaw? Warsaw. Okay, cool. So uh, that's, uh, we pronounce it Warsaw. I don't know why. It's nothing like they pronounce it in Warsaw. So anyway, um, this may have precipitated, according to a historian who I interviewed in the video, the explosion of veganism. There's now three, there's like two or three Krovajavas in Warsaw. And then there are, there's another one I, I, I saw in uh, Krakow in Poland too. So this is taking off. This vegan burger is great. So it won a vegan burger contest in 2013. There were 25 entries. Not the vegan class, not the vegetarian class and the burger class, the gluten-free class. It was one class, the burger, the best burger. There were 25 entries, 24 of them were meat. One of them was vegan and it won. <laughs> Go vegan. Okay. 
So in London, as I said, over 100 vegan restaurants. Uh, uh, there was the first city with over, over 100 vegan restaurants. Listen, Happy Cow, my favorite restaurants. So this was fed by water. It was a vegan lasagna. That was absolutely amazing. It's my favorite pizza in the world, Picky Wops. Have any of you been to London by any chance? Have you ever? Yeah, London is... Phew, just amazing as far as vegan restaurants, 132. Um, great pizza at Picky Wops here. And then um, The Gate is also a, really a wonderful, wonderful restaurant. This is an interesting uh, slide I, I, I took, um, I think earlier this year or late last year. And what's interesting about this is that's a butcher and then that's a vegan restaurant next to the butcher. What's even more interesting is if you look carefully, um, no customers, customers which is great. Vegans love this. They're like, oh yeah, awesome, right? There's no customer. So anyway, what's really interesting about this is um, I stayed in that position for about 30 minutes because I wanted to observe what was going on at this butcher in 2017, 2018. What's going on with the butcher? I didn't see any customers. And when I was filming, that guy was not happy because I've a lot of people, I'm sure, vegans, especially like, oh, hey, cool, let's get this video. And uh, yeah, so Temple of Hackney has, um, or Temple of Satan, it's in Hackney, so they call it Temple of Hackney. This is what they have. The very healthy food, obviously, but uh, it's vegan chicken um, over here, and then that's vegan macaroni and cheese. So um, if you know, you're into the junk food, great. I'm more into the health food. I'm more of a health food vegan. This was uh, Thailand, and I love Thailand because uh, there's an island on the west coast of Thailand. I believe it's, on the, it's off of the east coast of Thailand, actually, but it's the west coast of Koh Phangan. So it's an island. It's a tropical island. I did a video called The First Vegan Island? Question mark. And uh, the reason I wrote that is was clickbait. I wanted people to click on it because it's not the first vegan island. It's not all vegan, but there are a lot of vegan restaurants. And on the West Coast, there are loads of vegan restaurants, and there are, almost all of them have been started by Europeans, Polish, and different people from Europe. And the food is phenomenal. It's inexpensive, very inexpensive for what you get. So Koh Phangan is a favorite of mine. Then I went off to Chiang Mai, Thailand, and they had. Just amazing food. If you notice, the coloring on the food is really nice in Thailand. Thai, Thai vegan food is pretty amazing. If you notice, again, the coloring on the vegan food, um, but the flavors are amazing and inexpensive. And that's one of the reasons I absolutely love this place. Uh, Thailand. Um, this is mall food in Thailand. There's a place called Rabien Boon. Rabien Boon. And uh, what's interesting about mall food is it's incredibly inexpensive in Thailand. It looks like that. And all of that you get a big plate of it for about a euro, which is really nice, very affordable. Love that. Then we have, uh, in, this, in another mall, we have, um, you know, ta ta uh, it's called Vegan, um, a Veganery, and this is another mall, and uh, this was an amazing dessert. It took me quite a while, I did a video about this as well, going down into this dessert, because the woman who I interviewed said, no, 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 you gotta, you gotta put your spoon down at the bottom, you gotta get all of it out, and then eat it all together. So I tried to get a spoon from the top all the way down to the bottom and pull out one little whatever taste. It was pretty stressful. And this is, um, this is a piece of chocolate over here, too. It's great, but it's vegan ice cream. Vegan ice cream and bakery place as well. Crossroads is perhaps, as far as cooked food, because I do like a lot of raw food places, one of my favorite restaurants in the world. It's in Los Angeles. And, uh, story about this was amazing. I took my cousin, he did a show called Seinfeld, I don't know if you've heard of that show. Um, he's a producer, he's Jerry Seinfeld's manager, and he's got all this money and whatever, and I said, okay, George, let's go to a vegan restaurant. He's like, ah, oh, oh, I don't want to go to a vegan restaurant. He's 85 years old, and he's been around, and so we took him here, I took him here, and then I ordered uh, the crab cakes, that's vegan crab cakes right there. This is chicken scallopini, and we ordered some pizza. And, um, and he said to me, this is the best crab cake I've ever had, vegan or not. He didn't refer to it as vegan. Then he said, this is the best you know, chicken scallopini I've ever had, best pizza I've ever had. Then at the end of the meal, he said, and he's a complainer. He usually complains when I bring him to places. You know, this is not good. <laughs> that's, what, that's the way he talks, too. And then he, uh, he loved this. He said it was absolutely phenomenal. So this is his favorite, vegan, or favorite restaurant in the world. And he's been there many, many times since. That's the restaurant that we go to now when he takes the family out. And, it's really, really good. So anyway, other favorite restaurant. I love vegan sushi. This was in uh, Montreal, Canada. Sushi Momo, if you notice the uh, cucumbers draped down here and just beautiful presentation. Great vegan sushi restaurant, as well as Shenzhen in San Francisco, another vegan sushi restaurant. Is there a vegan sushi restaurant in Amsterdam? Opportunities, opportunities. Hint, 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 opportunities. Okay, Gentil Gourmet, Paris, France. Uh, wonderful food. 
This is a, a place I love in, in Brooklyn, New York. It's pizza by the slice, vegan pizza by the slice. So obviously the pepperoni is all vegan, but by the slice was a cool concept. So we've had vegan pizza for years in the US, but by the slice is not so easy to find. This was a place interesting in Montevideo. I also did a video in Montevideo, Uruguay. It's the, they, they consume more meat in Uruguay than any other place in the world. So I thought it'd be you know, cool to do a video down there. There was a vegan store, a vegan grocery store, which I thought was great. And then they had you know, really good vegan food. I did a video right here at this place called Vegan Wraps in Montevideo. This is one of the best things I've ever eaten. He didn't have a name for it. It was a quinoa vegan cheese muffin savory. I, he didn't know what it was because he made it. It was amazing. It's Montevideo, which is South America. Um, this actually was in Lisbon, Portugal. This is the best crepe I've ever eaten in my entire life. Um, this is a guy from Ireland, and he made me this just fantastic crepe with a sort of a potato crust, and um, I was very happy. He's winking at you, not me. But uh, this is really good. And he just he had a crepe. It's like a crepe stand, and I thought that was really clever. But it's just phenomenal tasting. Really, really good. Okay, this was recently, I did a trip to Cathados, Greece. It was actually uh, Santorini, Greece, and this was Cathados. I was just there about um, maybe a month ago. And uh, that was vegan feta cheese over there. And these were just pita bread. And this was a phyllo dough, and the view was phenomenal over here. It was nighttime, but there was this big rock and the ocean. Beautiful place in Santorini. <clears throat> okay, vegan restaurants around the world. This is what the landscape of vegan restaurants looks like. We have Africa, Asia, Australasia, which is New Zealand in that area of the world, Australia. Europe is ahead of everyone right now, and uh, North America, and then South America. This is the number of vegan restaurants around the world. As you can see, it's grown. It grows by the day. I actually update this, literally. I updated it, and she saw me. Didn't you see me? I updated this right before the, sh the, the presentation um, because it grows like 20 in a day. You know, so in the number of vegan restaurants. But rem the thing about this, there were only 446 vegan restaurants in 2008. Now, 6,693 restaurants as of one hour ago. 6,693. Every time I look at this slide, I think, wow, am I really here? Am I really speaking to you right now? This is incredible. Look at the growth and, you know, the exponential growth. So what are we, are we projecting it to go up here somewhere? Yeah, look, it's looking good. So if you see, even from last year, that's quite a lot of growth. According to Ohio State University study, 80% of restaurants fail. How many of you are thinking of opening up a restaurant? I was gonna, uh, yeah, it's not very encouraging, is it? 80% fail within five years. Now, what percentage of vegan restaurants on Happy Cow have closed after five years? We have this data. 45%. It's good news for vegan restaurants. But what percentage of vegan restaurants on Happy Cow close after 10 years? It's still less than the five years of regular restaurants, 69% after 10 years. That's quite good. That's encouraging for vegan restaurants because it is a very risky business. That's how many uh, vegan restaurants we have. Actually, I didn't even change this number. This was like yesterday's number. I forgot to change this one, but the accurate number is back here, as you can see. Let's see, 6678. And let's see what we have now. Do we have it? Let's go back just to see what we have here. See how big it was. 6678. There you go. That was just yesterday. 6693. So we have to change that slide. I have to keep remembering to change the other slide because it keeps going up. So let's go back now. OK. Um, vegan Trends. That's our Happy Cow mascot. It uh, hasn't quite shown up here to Utrecht. I don't know where it is right now, but uh, we're, we're going to look for it. So uh, anyway, that's our mascot. It's Namai. He's a bodybuilder. He lives in LA. He's a great guy. He was on the cover of a magazine, a men's health magazine. He's a vegan bodybuilder. And uh, this was Eat, Drink, Vegan. Uh, this was an event in Los Angeles. You know, events are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And this was an event in Los Angeles. And what's interesting about this event is the line for the event. And I'm going to show you how big the line really was. This was about four months ago, five months ago. This is a purely vegan event. It's in Los Angeles, California. <laughs> and this is the line for a completely vegan event. No meat, no dairy, no cheese, no eggs. Look at this. And the line goes and goes and goes. And I wish I could zoom it a little faster, but I can't right now. And maybe I'll, my next presentation, I'll zoom it even faster so we can get through this line. By the way, I was not very happy with this because I ended up at the end of this line. And uh, you know, it's not easy to, 
to deal with that, knowing you're hungry and you want to get into an event. So this is a vegan event in Los Angeles. It's still going, 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 and it's still going. Look at my position. <laughs> yes. When you got in, did they even have any food left? So I'll, I'll get into that in a moment. That's, uh, that's, a, that's an issue. So anyway, that was, uh, and you see all the people coming. That was not the end of the line. The line kept coming after that. Okay, so what's interesting about vegan events is, and I will answer your question in a moment because I have another slide about that. Um, Jake's Vegan Steaks, Picky Wops, Temple of Satan. Actually, I didn't mention Jake's, but I mentioned Picky Wops and Temple of Satan as favorite restaurants in London. These were booths in LA. So one trend that I'm noticing in 2018 is, Restaurants are traveling across the pond to the US and we're sending a lot of our best restaurants to London. So there's now an exchange of vegan booths at events from not just Germany to here, but you know, London to LA, which is a long way. So they're setting up booths. So people in LA now have the opportunity to try restaurants without traveling in London. Wow. So it's really neat. That was great to see. They had, a, they had a London section at that event that I just showed you. So that event was big. This was bigger. 35,000 people attended this event in one day. Now, take a look here. All right. So you asked me about lines. Here's the problem with these events. By the way, this took me eight minutes to walk from the beginning to the end of this event. Okay, it was a street fair, a street event, a street vegan event. Incredibly long. So what happens is you have to pay to get in these events. Then the lines are sometimes 45 minutes long. And then when you get to the front of the line, they say, we're out of this, we're out of this, we're out of this. So you've paid to get in to wait on a line, and then they're out of the food. Is bigger better? Appreciate what you have, because if this takes off like this, this is what we're dealing with in LA now. And uh, it's pretty incredible. So anyway, this line just keeps going and going and going and going and going. It's just, it, this is just a, a sea of people. Imagine just, a, oh, see, I drew the happy cow logo on the ground. <laughs> So anyway, this is a huge event. I'm not gonna bore you by taking you all the way down to the very end, but it's a very, very long, actually this is coming up, the end is coming up, right? That was eight minutes of walking. Whew. Long way. So anyway, this was a VegFest I just went to a month ago in Athens, so they are happening around the world. I'm going to VegFest regularly. I went to one in Zurich. Uh, they're, they're happening all over the world, these veg, veg events like this one. Now, this is interesting. This is happening on November 11th. If you're interested, it's in Long Beach, California. I, I may try to go to this, actually. I may. Um, this is, what's interesting about this slide is that this is a subset of vegan events. There used to be just 100 people at a vegan event. Now vegan events are so popular and veganism is becoming so popular that there are now sub-events, like just vegan cookies and sweets. I've never seen this before. This is the first year I'm seeing like these, you know, vegan pizza events. That's all pizza and whatever. So veganism is obviously taking off if these kind of events are emerging. <laughs> vegan food trends. So 12% of millennials are faithful vegetarians compared to 1% of boomers. Um, the clean meat, how many of you have heard of clean meat? Clean meat movement or clean meat? Uh, maybe if I describe it, you've heard of it. You take cow cells or pig cells, you put them in a dish, you feed them and they become meat. Have any of you heard of this before? Yeah. yeah, yeah, the clean meat movement, they call it. So it's really interesting. I was looking up what the carbon footprint is of clean meat versus regular meat. You'll save about 96% of the carbon, which is pretty amazing. So, you know, and, and water as well. Um, you'll save a tremendous amount of water. So, and chicken, just foods, which Bill Gates invested in, is expecting to put the first clean meat made from chicken in 2018. So there's like another month left. So they may not make it, we'll see. So it's not like the future five years, 10 years, it's now. We're gonna start to see meat that did not involve ongoing animal cruelty. The initial cruelty was taking some cells from a cow, but that cow will be the one cow that will continue to provide meat forever. And you can also tweak the meat for omega-3s, fats, and things like that to make a healthier meat. Would I try it? I'm not interested. At this point, I'm just like, I'd rather just eat fresh fruits and vegetables. I'm not convinced it's healthier. I, I don't really, it's not interesting to me. But for, for the meat, People that love meat, it is, I'm sure. Um, so Germany uh, is the number one pr producer of vegan products. You probably noticed from the show, like a lot of the products are from Germany. More than the US, Germany is the number one producer of vegan products. McDonald's, Domino's, I, I had a vegan burger because I wanted to try it because I talk about this stuff to people who are not vegans. At, in, in London, I had a, it was a, like a, it was like a falafel burger, they, but they call it the vegan burger. 
It was awful, but you know, that's McDonald's, right? Um, and they, they're testing them in Finland. I know they have them in Finland, and I think in Sweden now, so they have vegan burgers. Then you have Domino's and Starbucks, Pizza Hut. All these chains are now offering vegan options around the world, which is pretty cool. Um, KFC, I know in November this month in the UK are offering vegan chicken or vegetarian. I'm not sure if it's vegetarian or vegan yet. We'll see. But they're offering, they're going to start to offer that at KFC. Um, dairy milk sales are plunging down 11% from 2015 to 2020 and 24 billion by 2025 for alternative dairy market, which is amazing. Vegan cheese market is growing as well, uh, 4 billion by 2024. Um, vegan meat, seafood, they're becoming a lot more believable. There's the, uh, that's in Netherlands, I was a vegetarian butcher, I'm sure you know. These are some others, uh, that's the B12 burger in the UK. Good Catch makes vegan seafood, veg. These are all products that are, uh, global meat substitute market, <coughs> 5.2 billion by 2020. Um, it's just, all of this is just incredible research that I've just put together. There are now vegan vending machines. I don't know if you've heard of those, vegan vending machines. 70% of universities are offering vegan options, vegan cruises, vegan-cruises.com. I'm, I'm, this guy is doing these vegan cruises, which is really cool. Vegan tours and vegan bars. Oh, there's Beelman's in LA, it's a vegan bar which is, they serve just vegan food. And Nestle is even jumping on the bandwagon and they're you know, financing companies to get into the vegan game. Nestle is just huge, they own so many companies. So it's, it's great to see that. Ikea, how many of you have been to Ikea and had a vegan hot dog at Ikea? A vegan dog, was it good? Okay, yeah, well, they've sold, I think in the last two months, they've sold over a million yeah. vegan hot dogs at Ikea. So. I didn't like their meatballs at all. They were vegan meatballs. But hey, they're trying, you know, it's a, they serve a lot of food. California law requires hospitals and prisons to offer vegan meals. And European veggie and beet uh, meat sales, veggie meat sales have increased by over 451% over four years. So you, as you can see, we're on the rise. Um, this is the Impossible Burger. How many of you have heard of this burger? Game changer. How many of you have had this burger? Okay, you have, what do you think? You have to discuss it to find it. Yeah. Did you like it or you? You like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite believable. It, it's so believable, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So what they did is um, Impossible created a vegan blood out of, uh, gen it's like genetically modified yeast. And they infused this blood into this, I guess it's p potato starch or uh, wheat uh, gluten. And it really does have like the mouthfeel. It, it supposedly, it bleeds too. It's the most believable vegan burger I've ever had. It was crazy when I tried it. Now, this is more recent. This is about two months ago. Impossible Burger. I did go over and I had their pizza and I had their sliders as well. And uh, what's interesting is those buns were not vegan. So I had the guy make some pizza dough and put it, my vegan burger in the pizza dough. And uh, I filmed it. And I was going to put it on our YouTube channel. But he called me. He goes, you can't put that up. At corporate wouldn't allow me to have that put up. And I said, why not? Well, because our bread is not vegan and they don't want anyone to ask for us to make customized vegan dough. I said, oh, okay. So anyway, I had the first and only vegan slider at Fresh Brothers, which is a chain. The vegan slider with cheese. It was really good though, I have to admit. This, I was in uh, Toronto about two months, a month ago, last month, in September. Uh, no, yeah. So uh, I think it was September. It was the vegan burger sold out at a &W. So So they didn't even anticipate the demand for the vegan burger. It sold out at a fast food chain, the vegan burger. And by the way, Beyond Burger is going public. So if you are interested in buying a stock in a vegan company, they're going public, I just read. So vegan stores around the world, as you can see, um, Europe is once again ahead of the game. Um, you're very fortunate to live here if you do live here. I would like to live here someday. Um, North America is behind as far as the uh, number of vegan stores throughout the country. And uh, even Africa now has seven vegan stores, which is great to see. Um, these are just some vegan stores around the world. Veggie for You over in Den Haag. I was there the other day. They had a lot of vegan products. That's the closest vegan store. Is it, is it, are there any vegan stores that you know of in Amsterdam? I haven't, haven't looked Vega recently. Bar. Which one? Vega Bar. Vega, yeah, right, Vega Bar. That's right. So, so that one's the closest right here, I think. It would be Veggies for You. Um, Green Bay in London. There's, there's these vegan, a number of vegan stores that are opening up. I was just in Bratislava. I went to a place called Vigana. It was very... Very strange. That's the vegan store in Bratislava, Slovakia. It's really a nice store. That's Den Haag. 
Now, that is the best vegan cheese I've ever had. That was in Switzerland. Switzerland's also extremely expensive, so everything there is expensive. And don't expect to ever try this out of Switzerland because if they ship it here, it'll be a lot more. It wasn't that much. I think it was 12 euros for that, 12 or 13 euros, but if they were to ship it here, it would be even more. But this is a, a camembert vegan cheese made of cashews. It was absolutely tremendous. It's at Clemelier Vegan in Geneva, Switzerland. It was amazing, just amazing vegan cheese. Vegan jelly shops. So this is interesting. I, I looked in the window from the outside and I saw all this vegan meat, or not vegan meat. Uh, it, it actually isn't even vegan meat. It's yarn. It's made of like fabric. And they just made it look like a deli. But it's actually a vegan, uh, a, a vegetarian vegan deli in, um, in Zurich in Switzerland called Heitel. Heitel is actually the oldest vegetarian restaurant in Europe. And it still exists today. And oh, was that expensive. I had a bowl of Vegan food, it was $46 at a buffet. 46 euros, I guess, I don't know. It was in francs, but equivalent about 46, 46. Okay, what I'm noticing another trend is large vegan sections of products inside of the traditional grocery stores. This was actually at, in Virginia when I became vegan back in 1992. And there was nothing like this. This is a regular grocery store. And if you notice, these are just milks. Look at all those milks at a regular grocery store. Look at all these vegan products, vegan meats and all these things labeled as vegan. It's really incredible. This actually was just last week in Dusseldorf at uh, Zurheim Feinkost. <laughs> and they had a vegan vegetarian uh, section in a regular store that's serving meat as well. So they're, and these are growing, which is great. These are getting bigger and bigger each year. And obviously there's limited real estate in stores. So if these are getting bigger, they're obviously pushing out products that aren't doing as well. So it's great to see that. Um, this is also a trend. I just saw this in uh, Dusseldorf last week. I'd never seen this before. Maybe you have this here, but if you notice these greens, that's a vegan product and it says vegan right there. So when it's nice to go into a store and you can just see what's vegan by the label. That's a great idea in a regular store. Tomato sushi, this is actually really interesting. This is called a himi. This is vegan. It's like salmon, but it's made of tomatoes. And they take tomatoes, and I looked at a recipe online, and what they do is, I believe, is they, uh, they take tomatoes and they boil them quickly. And then they put them in cold water and then the skin comes off and they're left with that. And then they cut those and they put them in spices like uh, seaweed and maybe soy sauce and other spices and they get a himi. They've trademarked this and it's tomato tuna. I thought that was really cool. That was at Whole Foods in Los Angeles. First time I'd seen that. It's Netherlands trends. So 2016, I don't have a new figure on this. So there's 70, I'm sure there's more now. 70,000 vegans in Netherlands, 800,000 vegetarians in Netherlands. Fewer vegans because Dutch do not want to give up cheese. You know, it's a hard thing in this country, I guess, to give up cheese. This was great news. 2018 Council of Environment and Infrastructure Netherlands citizens to move toward a diet of 60% plant-based protein by 2030. It's great news for vegans and great news for the world. Um, 2018, this is a jumbo food market, largest supermarket in Northern Netherlands, boasts the nation's largest assortment of vegan products, adding more than 30 feet of dedicated shelf space for vegan products. That's absolutely amazing. Albert Heijn. Last year when I had notes on Netherlands, it was like two things. So this is, this is a trend. There's more Netherlands vegan news, which is great to see. Albert Heijn is testing out vegan options with a new de dedicated vegan case uh, in one of its uh, popular Amsterdam locations. Vivira, I've been reading about this in Tesco, um, 40,000 units of their vegan steaks, which is really amazing. And then this, uh, there's a vegetarian automat. How many of you have been here to the uh, health food wall in Amsterdam? It's a uh, they have, yeah, I guess you, there's, it's a wall, a wall of vegan food, and you just take your food out of the wall. <laughs> Anyone been there? Yeah. Anyone heard of this place? So, it just opened. Okay. Well, I'm, I, maybe I'll go. <laughs> More Netherlands trends. Look at this. So there are a new vegan pizzas. Um, it's Domino's. Domino's actually in Israel. All the Domino's have vegan cheese. But here it's, uh, they create in collaboration with the Dutch Society. Uh, for veganism, brands of Domino's in Belgium and Netherlands with have vegan pizzas. Vegan Sea Star a brand as vegan salmon and tuna fish in Netherlands. And just today I added this, Artis are, are the Amsterdam Zoo. And I know there's a lot of controversy with zoos, but at least they're serving only vegetarian food as of now. I believe it's now. Is it starting now, right now? Maybe now or maybe soon, but that's an article that just popped in the news yesterday. Great to see even Starbucks is going vegan. Starbucks in Amsterdam promoting vegan. I see the word vegan there. Look at that. It's great. 
More Netherlands trends. Look, it just keeps going to Charlie's, which is downstairs. This I actually took last year. They're featuring vegan cheese. So it, there, was, there was a happy cheese downstairs from Germany as well. But this is Netherlands, so I'm promoting this one. So we're in Netherlands right now. Um, and this is great. These are restaurants that used to be serve either meat or dairy, and they've converted to completely. Is, are you guys reading ahead? We'll take a look at number two. A dog food restaurant is now a vegan restaurant. Dog meat. Oof. Oof. Cambodia. In Phnom Penh, Sabay Vigilicious. They were special. Their specialty was dog meat. That's great to see. It's now a vegan restaurant. What about a trend? England, look at all these places. They're converting their restaurants to vegan restaurants from restaurants that serve either dairy or meat or, or whatever else. More, Hong Kong, New Zealand. I'm keeping track of these. This interests me. I'm, I'm, you know, these are restaurants that are saying, forget about it. Don't want to serve dairy or meat anymore. Bottom line, according to the veganizers, 213% in gross sales when you convert your restaurant from a meat or dairy restaurant to a vegan restaurant. Why is that? Vegan Instagrammers. How many vegan Instagrammers do we have here? Okay. In the US, it's a huge thing. <laughs> I mean, everybody's taking pictures of their food and putting it on Instagram. That's one of the reasons why the vegan scene has grown, is Instagram. It's huge. So um, the veganizers, that's, a, that's great news for restaurants that are considering going vegan. Here's some weird vegan restaurants around the world. This one was funny. Um, I, I'll just skip to the second one, Green Fair in Herndon. I took my dad there. Probably not a great choice for a guy who is not vegan. Salt, oil, and sugar-free. Well, it was very bland for him, and he asked me if there was a bottle of ketchup he could put on the food. <laughs> Dad, come on. Okay. Um, first 24-hour drive through restaurant in uh, London, Ontario. The top one, it's a goddess popcorn and tea lounge. I thought that was pretty odd, but this one's weird. In London, there's this place that has avocado-shaped ice cream. Pretty bizarre. A couple more. Uh, Carmen Rogosta is this place in Paris, and they have, it's a clothing store, and she has one, I think one table. I think I ate the one table. Might have been two, but I think it was one. And great food there, great tiramisu. This place is a goth-themed vegan restaurant in Arizona. Casa Diablo is a vegan strip club. I went to that about three months ago. I didn't actually see any strippers. I was outside eating. They're like, come on in. I said, no, the food's too good. How many of you believe that? <laughs> no, it's, no, it's true. It's true, but... But anyway, um, and then blackout dining in the dark is really interesting. It's, I, I've heard, I guess in this country, you have restaurants you go in and you eat in the dark. Is that right? I've heard. So this is a vegan one in Las Vegas, okay? What's really great about this restaurant is um, the pictures of the food are phenomenal. It looks like the food is absolutely amazing. And uh, I actually took one off of our site, um, one of the pictures of the food. This was a picture posted by Happy Cow user Jill Fulbright Gray. And this is her meal, and the, the quote was, our dinner. So anyway... If you can see, it just looks phenomenal. This is, uh, I don't know what that is. Can you see that? I can't see it, so I thought that was funny. All right, tips. Uh, these are things that I've sort of collected over time because there are things as a long-term vegan you may not know. And if you're really trying to keep vegan, you might soon realize you're not as vegan as you thought you were. And if, you know, it depends on how strict you are. So anyway, refried beans, especially in Mexico, they often contain pork fat, orange juice, if you see vitamin D in orange juice, oftentimes that vitamin D is not vegan. So, and uh, even apple juice, a lot of times apple juice is not vegan as well. Soy cheese and milk may have animal products. Pasta often has egg in it. Marinara sauce may contain fish. Some apple and orange juice, as I said, are in beers are clarified with, uh, they, they make it clear with a fish bladder. A lot of beers. So, you know, is it vegan? It's not. Turmeric, it, a tip, anti-inflammatory. It's good for, the, good for the brains, good for if you have swelling in your body. I learned in Italy that uh, pizza crust often contains strutto, which is a lard. You know, in the, in the crust of pizzas, so you're getting a vegan pizza with just the vegetables and the pizza crust may, in Italy, have lard in it. Not in other countries that I know of, but in Italy, possibly. Argentina bread often has beef fat, which I just learned when I went to Argentina. Tempura breading, uh, often made with egg. Um, wine may contain uh, milk protein or egg whites or gelatin or maybe filtered through Isinglass. So wine is often not vegan. In Greece, I just learned this a month ago, that Greece, dolmades, those little green things, the grape leaves with the rice, the butter, they may have butter in the rice. I didn't, I'd never heard of that, so just learned that. Finally, and the reason I exhaust you, yes? 
Why is turmeric not vegan? Oh no, those are not things that are, are not vegan. That was actually a tip. These are tips. I know I threw that in there just because the reason I throw that in there, and yeah, it's maybe a little bit out of place, is turmeric is an anti-inflammatory. It helps to reduce Alzheimer's rates. It's really good. So it's just a tip that I learned. And I, exactly, exactly. But I didn't want a, a separate category and turmeric. So I just threw it in there. But turmeric is vegan, definitely. Unless you make meat with it, then it's not fully vegan. The, the turmeric will always be vegan, but the meat will not be obviously vegan. So some people find vegans annoying because they proselytize. These are my and finally notes. So there was a, a study in England last year that I saw 26% of people surveyed said that they won't become vegan because they find vegans annoying. <laughs> so what I recommend is don't be annoying. <laughs> you know, people, I, I was not always vegan, but I find that people have been vegan for two, three years. They, they, they give people a hard time. And I'm not sure if it's in this country, but I've seen it plenty of times where I live. People give people a really hard time. It's like, you know, I say qu question people more as opposed to telling them what to eat or, or you really shouldn't eat that. Be careful with that because it's, uh, I'd rather see those 26% of people say, oh, I love vegans. I want to become vegan because I love them. So recommend curbing those behaviors. And to be fully ca uh, vegan, you would need to live in a cave. And that's true. Even how many of you think you're fully vegan? You've like literally gone the entire way. Okay. You think you have. Okay. Do you ride a bicycle? I, uh, electric. Electric bike. Okay. Mm -hmm. What brand of tires do you have on your bicycle? Oh, I don't know. Oh. No. Are they vegan? No. Oh. I don't know. So you bought tires possibly for your bike and they're not vegan. Do you still think you're 100% vegan? Do you want me to continue? No. Okay. I can, I, can, I can keep going if you want. Okay. So anyway, um, that's you know, what I tell people is it, literally, now I do have vegan bike tires. They're specialized. They're called specialized bike tires. They are vegan. Michelin, Michelin car tires are vegan. So if you're like trying to go the whole way and you want to say, I am holier than thou, I'm fully vegan, you'd really have to do your research on every single thing you do. So I use that one every time because how many, because what happens is first I started with cars and mm -hmm. I said, oh, your car tires, but people are like, oh, I ride a bike. I'm totally vegan. Yes. I said, oh, okay, what are your bike tire? So anyway, that's, uh, so anyway, that is it for this year. I'm going to be speaking next year as well. And I'll change the speech completely as I do every year. And uh, thank you very much for coming. Do you have any questions? I had one uh, question about yes. the, uh, the nutritious uh, deficiencies. Yes. Have those, uh, yeah, some do, some don't. Um, D3, yes. B12, not likely. Wow. It's like 99.8% have enough B12 usually. So I think some of these things, I mean, I, I think vegans want to believe that a lot of times. They want to believe that, oh, they get it. But for D, yes. I mean, D, they have the deficiencies, but I, B12 pretty Omega much. Fatty acids? I mean, Omega 3 fat, fat, yeah, fish, fish has omega-3 fatty acids, and uh, that's where the you know, normals get their, their omega-3s. It's DHA, EPA. I get it from algae. Um, it's it's um, algae-based EPA, DHA. Now, omega-3s from flax convert over to EPA, DHA, so you can eat flax. And, but you'd have to eat a lot of flax to get the EPA, DHA, so I go right to the source. And algae is a really good food source. So. Any other questions, answers, need recommendations, anything? Yes? Like, should I take B12 every day or like do I? Week yeah. Or so, so what I do is I, I take like a, a pill to a week, maybe. OK. You can take it every day. You can take more today, less tomorrow. I've got my B12 checked for at least 10 years, and I've never been deficient. So it's working for me. I don't know if it works for you. Some people just don't. Pro oh, is that not on power that whole time? Um, some people do not. Um, some people do not process B12 very well. So I do recommend, if you can, try to get your blood tested for you know nutrients and just see if you have enough B12, enough D. And if you don't, you, you know, I would highly consider you supplement or work on a diet that incorporates that. But B12, I don't know of a good reliable source. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I usually take it once a week. So. Okay. If you take it once a week, take a couple more pills probably. Yeah. You know? okay. yeah. yeah. I, I don't remember every day. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Any other answers? Anything you want to talk about? OK, we're good to go. Well, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions privately, I'll be up here for a little bit, and then I'll be outside. So thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.